Hey guys, Dieter Melhorn here. I hope you're doing well. It's a beautiful evening. I'm out on Lake Wiley doing some dragging for some catfish. We're going to be fishing into the night. Uh, don't know how long I'm staying out, but uh, I've been out here for about an hour. Stopped and caught bait for a while. And uh, hey man, what's up? I got somebody checking in already. Stopped and caught some brim, filled the tank up with brim, and uh, started drifting. And uh, I've already put four fish in the boat. As a matter of fact, I think I need to click them off. Nope, already clicked them off. There we go. We're already up to four. Uh, 12 pounds about the biggest. Country girl. What's up, girl? How you doing? Down in Texas. Dang, everybody's jumping in. Tim's in. How y'all doing? Hopefully uh, you're subscribed to me on uh, Instagram because I put a notification up there. And I also just went over to F Dieter Melhorn Fishing on Facebook and put a notification up. Muddy River, Chris Flores. What's up, pal? Are you out fishing or you tired from a hard day at work? So everybody's on the out tonight. Very cool. I know the uh, hometown crowd here on the East Coast in my area is probably going to be tuning into the Panthers game at some point hoping they win, and the rest of the country will be tuning in to hope they lose, because everybody else hates Cam Newton, so uh, I'll probably lose some of y'all, or you really don't give a crap about preseason football like me, and poof, it's, uh, you're gone, so anyway, um, I, uh, if you hadn't noticed, I've got a new website up, Dieter Melhorn Fishing, I finally went ahead and launched it and got it up, uh, it's in its fledgling stages. And I uh, also started a blog on there, which uh, I know nothing about. So uh, put a first couple of posts up, got some other stuff I'm going to be putting up. And uh, I'm also going to be sharing that over on the Catfish Clothing blog that they're putting up. So I'll uh, be having that up. Hey, Bob Clark, how you doing, buddy? Glad to see you. Tony's in here. Very good, guys. Nice little crowd of people jumping in. Uh, I'm on Lake Wiley. Uh, Dragging some baits, as the rest of the country calls it. We call it drifting, trolling, whatever. So, uh, anyway, it's Santee Rigs uh, on the bottom. And uh, what I did, I started out in the river channel. I'll kind of show you here. Uh, let me get this over to... We'll do a little uh, tutorial on the sonar here. Uh, I'll show you exactly what I did. Let me zoom that out some. All right, let me get you over here. You get a lesson. You get actually some some uh, lesson here on drifting and some terminology because I know I realize some of this terminology is confusing for people. All right, you can see I started out down here and was in the river channel. These lines here mark the river channel. As I come in closer on this, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a mark for a 16-pound blue from the other day that I caught. Hang on, let me get back down here. As you zoom in. Hopefully you guys know how to read a topographical map and contour lines. Oh, did I lose it? No, there we go. But those tight lines mean a steep edge. Same thing here. You can kind of see where the old river channel runs up through here. That's the old river channel uh, that was there that they put the dam up on and flooded all this to make a lake. So anyway, I started out down here. You can see in the middle of it. Came up at a pretty good ways and came over to this edge, pardon the boat rock here because I got a weight coming in, and got on this edge here, started coming up the edge of it, and that's where I've been catching fish at, and I'm all the way up to here. So anyway, that's kind of your quick down and dirty tutorial on uh, what the heck's going on. Sometimes it's easier to show people on a uh, actual graph like that. But yeah, uh, if you haven't, uh, if you've got a sonar unit that's got mapping on it, get that horizon. It's the cameraman in him, and it drives me crazy. Um, if you get a sonar unit with mapping, make sure you understand what those contour lines mean and kind of get a wrap your head around them. Hey, Terry Douglas, uh, around what they mean and stuff, because that will help you. I, I take for granted I was in the military, and we did land navigation and topographic maps were something we stared at all the time. So once you get your head wrapped around it, it'll click, and you'll be able to look at one right away and tell where the ups and the downs and the high places are. But... Uh, there's plenty of tutorials that can explain it online. Uh, but yeah, make sure you understand that because it'll make a lot more sense to you when you get out and start fishing. So uh, anyway, a uh, little tip of the day. I've got six rods out. Six rods. This is the quick quiz for you. Two, there we go. <laughs> and uh, two on planer boards. Uh, all of them are on the bottom. I've just got them spaced out a little bit. I didn't feel like fiddling with four planer, bo or four planer boards. It's the only reason. And... Uh, that's about it, dragging some brim. And uh, what's up, Damon? How you doing, pal? Another local guy. Uh, 
So that's what I got going on. Uh, hoping to get on some more fish. I'm staying on that channel ledge. Make a little turn here. Water's clear. Big thing is the water temperature. Let me get back over here to the other screen. Uh, water temperature's dropped is what it comes down to. Uh, it is down to 85 degrees, which uh, a week ago, two weeks, two weeks ago for sure, this time of the day, water temperatures are up around 90, 91 degrees. So uh, we've had daytime highs in the mid to low 80s. Sorry for that shadow. Let me move the camera a little bit here. There we go. Uh, in the uh, mid 80s and uh, our overnight lows have been in the 60, 70 degree range, six, upper 60, 70. So that average daytime temperature uh, is dropping. So uh, when that drops, so does the uh, so does the water temperature. What's the difference between trolling reel and a bait casting reel? Nothing. Uh, uh, well, I say this: there are some people use uh, actually technically nothing. Uh, uh, hold Damon, hold that question on the slime line. There is no difference between uh, uh, the reels are the same. You can use any kind of reel. I use a bait caster reel mainly because you can let line out easy. You can do it with a spinning reel if you've got one of those. I guess some of the trolling reels uh, may be referring to some offshore stuff. Some of them have line counters on them, which is basically allow you to measure your line. If you got those great, you can be very precise with how much line you're putting out each time and you're able to repli bleh, replicate that each time. Uh, but you don't need that. You can do it with a spinning, spinning reel. The reason most of us use bait casters is because you can push the button, release line, and let it go out. You can do the same thing on a spinning rod. Uh, it's just it's maybe a little bit easier on these. They've got a clicker on them so that, you know, you can engage a clicker and all that. But either one of them will work. Don't get, if you're trying to do this, don't get bent out of shape on having to have some kind of high dollar rod and reel and combo and stuff to do it. This is a very simple type of fishing. And just to clarify, somebody asked the other day, messaged me, what's the difference between trolling and drifting? Well, I'll put it to you this way. There's two ways, there's only two ways to catch catfish. One is sitting still and the other is moving. This is from a boat. You're either anchored and sitting still or your boat's moving. And basically with trolling, technically you're using a motor to move the boat and drifting, you're using current or wind to move the boat. That's all. It's a moving boat is the bottom line. The boat's moving across the water, whether it be motor propelled or wind current propelled. And within each of those techniques, anchoring and, and uh, drifting, trolling, dragging, there's just all kinds of different ways to do it. Damon, who was in here, is a good uh, drifting trolling fisherman, and he can tell you once you get into trolling drifting, the basic way is you put the rods out and you float across the water with the wind. Don't pay any, you just let it go. Set it and forget it. And uh, that's the way I started out doing. We would go to Santee Cooper, run to the other side of it, put out a drift sock, float all the way across the lake for six, seven hours and catch fish the whole way, never paying any attention to where we went. As you get into trying to catch bigger fish in fish specific areas, it gets a little more technical using trolling motor, drift socks, trying to position the boat, running into the wind, and it gets uh, Panther 6, Texans 0. Uh, all right, somebody's giving me a, a score update. I appreciate that. Uh, it gets more technical as you get into fishing, uh, trolling, and stuff. Uh, it can get very technical, especially when the guys who tournament fish and are trying to fish a specific ledge or ridge or uh, humps, that kind of and stay on it and all that, it gets very technical. There's a lot of times uh, when fish are holding in certain areas and you're drifting for them, you may drift two or 300 yards, reel them in, turn around and go back and go back over. It's just almost laying out a grid as you go up through there. So that's, uh, that's kind of the difference. So anyway, good question. Good question. I love the questions. Hope that helps. My spinner has clickers and can unlock to let line out. Lots of good reels. Yeah, you know, there are the uh, the good spinning reel. I think I have a planter board going off. The spinning reels have the uh, little lever of the good ones that you can flip over and stuff. So uh, I think I got a fish on the planter board. Let's see what we got up here. Uh, see what we got. Yep, up. Oh, did he stay? Yep, small fish. Small fish. But listen, any fish on a live feed's a good fish. So, there we go. We'll take them. Beautiful evening. May have pulled him off. He's so little, I may pull his lips apart. Unlevel horizons. That annoys me. Cutting off people's head. That annoys me. That's better. Little fish. 
I'm only pulling brim today. That's all I got with me. Uh, Dieter got dropped on his head when he was a kid. Did you? Why did you have to tell everybody? Now they may not feel sorry for me knowing that. Let's see what we got here. Oh, he's a little channel cat. Oh, he's precious. He is precious. Dang. He's a precious one. In case you're wondering, these are the Dieter Millhorn Limited Edition Signature Series Planar Wars. <laughs> I'll have those on my website under the gear section here pretty soon. Ah, a channel cat. Arr, 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 go Panthers! Go Panthers! Go Panthers! Go Panthers! Panthers, go, 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 go! <sighs> the lunacy. The lunacy. The game must have started early. I uh, had some calls to work the game, but had something else going on. All right, let me get this back out. Bear with me, guys. You ever wonder on the planers? Cast it out. You don't have to chunk it out far. I let it hit bottom. Planers come in a pair. One for the right side and one for the left. Got a little clip here, put a line onto it. It's a little curly Q thing. Threads on there like that. That is what attaches the line to the planer board. That will not come off now. And the front of the line, front of the planer board, goes into a clip. You put it into the water, it pulls tight, and you catch fish, hopefully. The purpose in a planer board is to get the lines out further away from the boat. So you get a wider spread coming down when you're drifting. I think we may have another fish on, but first, bam! Number five, let's see what we got over here. I'm back just when you thought you lost me. Now let's see what we got here. Which one? Which one was it? Was it this one? No, not a fish there. Well, let's see if there's one on the planer. I thought I'd seen it go. Yeah, he's on. Sometimes with these planers, it can, if it's a small fish, they'll pull the planer back one time and then it's kind of hard to tell they're on there. I've dragged them around for a while sometimes. So. Again, hanging on this channel ledge, picking them up. I actually got some arches on the bottom now that I'm seeing. Nothing big though, no big fish. They're here somewhere though. Beautiful sunset. I'm gonna show you this sunset here. This is nice. This is nice. That was the little thumbnail thing. Hopefully you guys that are subscribed to me on, follow me on Dieter Melhorn Fishing on Facebook, got the notification, I put a little thing up. Bye, Quick release, he's in the boat. Another beautiful channel cat. Nice one. Uh oh. Score's tied up. Had a rattle on that one. I've been keeping score tonight. That is fish number six. And we're split tonight. Three and three. So. I was uh, keeping score. The rattles have slightly outperformed the uh, ones without rattles over the past few trips since I've been using them. For those of you who don't know anything about rattles, I'll show you here in a second as soon as I get this bait back in the water. Yeah, that's what they are. No, I don't need any updates. Remind me later. Sorry about that. Got a little noise there. I'll put it right here on the front. So it bumps against that because it's going to float up and hit. So that's what we got. Well, if nothing else, at least I've caught some fish. These last few feeds have been boring for fish catching. Get this one back in the water for you. Again, chunk it out there. Let it hit bottom. 
put that clip on. I'll try to do this where you can see it. Goes on there, it's a little pigtail. Bam. Bam. She's on, ready to go. And we've been about even tonight on planer. Well, I take that back. Yeah, all right. several of them have been on the planer board, so there you go. Very nice. Show you all this sunset. This is just all beautiful. Hold on there. Stay with me. Bam. Look at that. How about that, folks? Is that not... Well, it's crooked. Can't have the rods in the middle of it. There we go. Look at that. Oh, oh somebody just, just snap a picture of that, freeze that frame, and put it on your desktop. I mean, that's just beautiful right there. You can just play a loop of this and just listen to me talk in the background. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, uh, okay, enough of that, sorry. I know that got really boring really quick. <laughs> All right, bear with me, I gotta grab a drink. I've been jacking my jaws for 16 minutes. Stand by. Stand by, I'm still with you. Haven't left you yet. Still love you. Hope you're doing well. Bam, bam, like a baller, like a holla, boom. Number six, it's a good night. Good night of fishing. I could go home right now and be a decent night. Playing around a little way. I was going to give you a little uh, heads up if you followed any of. Uh, uh, oh, dang it, I may be hung on the one. Uh, my stuff earlier, past couple weeks, been down here at night. Fishing's been pretty slow. It's been seven, eight fish a day. I came out the other day during the day. I didn't go live that day for some reason, and uh, it was uh, a good day. I caught like 16 fish in about five hours. So let me deal with this hung up rod, and then I'll go over some details because I know we got some people coming in late here. Great crowd tonight, though. Thank you guys for joining. Hey, Dieter, what kind of conditioner do you use? I'm going to tell you something about my hair. You're going to laugh at this. Uh, let's see if I can get that rod broke loose. That one's <coughs> not coming loose. One of the uh, downsides to trolling is you will lose rigs occasionally. So some of them you get loose, some of them you don't. So I'm going to see if I can pop this one loose and break it. Yep, got it loose. All right, I'm going to tell you something about my hair, and the women are going to cringe when I tell you this, okay? I either have to wash my hair. <laughs> Why in the heck are we talking about my hair? But you brought it up, Chris Flores at Muddy River. Uh, I either have to wash my hair about every two days, or I don't wash it. If I don't wash it, it takes about a week. It's kind of ratty, and then it balances out, and it stays the beautiful way that it is now. Uh, a hair stylist told me I'm lucky that I have that kind of hair like that. They said pretty much I don't have to wash it if I don't want to. As crazy as that sounds, but I do. I do have to occasionally. So anyway, I can actually go a long time without washing my hair, and it doesn't get ratty or it actually looks really kind of yucky whenever it's just been washed. It's kind of all over the place. Why are we talking about my hair? Chris Flores, Muddy River Catfishing. Y'all all go subscribe to his site and ask him why he's asking me silly questions. One more shot on the sunset here. I oh, oh, look at that, folks. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Bam, back. Okay. So, uh, what's that sound? What is that right there? What is that? What is that? Ro well, look at my finger. Look at my finger. Is that a fish? I heard it. Standing by. Bam! Hooked up again, baby. Bam! This will fit right into, if you go to DieterMelhornFishing.com, my blog, I talk about stable water temperatures, stable bite, that late summer, uh, that late summer stable bite, late summer, early fall bite. I think that's what we're into now. Uh, water temperature, 84, 85 degrees at the end of the day. Uh, stability's here for a while. So not necessarily big, big fish, but uh, you can catch fish. 
uh, you can go out on like a day like today and put fish in the boat consistently. So, get this one in. Hey, thank you, thank you, woo! Theater Melhorn Fan Club coming by there. Giving me the congratulatory stand innovation for a monster channel cat. I feel like Kevin Van Dam when they cheer for him when he catches a two pound ditch pickle. Like it's the greatest thing on earth, which is basically what I've done. But it's cool, it's fun. Channel cat, rounded anal fins, the way you identify them. There we go. Ah, wait, wait. Oh, he's bleeding, let me get him back in. I don't have some blood coming out, sorry about that. Uh, I was gonna do an anal fin ray count. That's a big old hyphenated term, isn't it? Uh, to identify, that could have been a white cat. Look more like a channel on the head, but white cats and channel cats look very similar. And again, it's the anal fin that, be careful who you say that around, by the way. Uh, if you're at work and you start talking to somebody on the phone about anal fins and counting the rays, just telling you they'll call human resources. You'll get report. You'll get written up. It won't end well. People just don't know what anal rays are. Down there at the office. You'll get that report. Bob's talking about anal rays again. We warned him about that. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's that kind of day. Bam, like a baller. All right, where was I? So much happening, it's so exciting. This is the way all fly fishing shows should be. Full of catching and stuff and let me get back over to the sonar in the right place. Bam, and yeah, we're kind of getting up onto the flat here. I think that's why I'm getting back into the channel cats and out of the blue. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you what I'm talking about. What I did here is I started the drift up away from this channel edge, which is right here. I'm up in here. There's where I caught a blue at some point. Who knows when? I mark all my teener size fish. But I'm up here onto this flat area where it's around, eh, it's kind of stable in here around 20 feet. So trying to get back over here that's the plan so anyway. tutorial on how to drift so did i lose everybody have y'all just like lost your minds now it's just like what the heck's gonna happen next anal rays and fish and craziness where was i, I was going to talk about something somebody mentioned something i've already spooled one reel tonight what happens is you get here and you get to fiddling with stuff and you forget that line's going out and you look over and it's about down to the knot. So that's a lot of cranking to get it back on. Oh, I'm bringing everybody up to date. A lot of new people in. Uh, fishing on Lake Wiley. Been out here probably an hour and a half. Been out here probably two hours. Settled something caught bait. Got a bunch of brim. Caught them on rod and reel. Got them in the tank. Matter of fact, I need to turn it on. And two boards tonight is all I'm running. Uh, and... Uh, came down here and I started drifting in the area kind of right above uh, just is what we call knob knob n-o-b-b -B. we have a bridge that spans the lake in the middle and you're either fishing knob or sob and I'm slightly north of Buster Boyd Bridge so that's where the knob and sob come in so uh, yeah that's what I'm doing dragging some baits put seven fish in the boat which is really cool and uh, pretty good little bite oh and I was gonna tell you the rattle thing I was talking about that I'm kind of doing a little test. I think I'm up four to three. Rattles are winning. These right here. Uh, guys at Hooker's Terminal Tackle sent these to me. Woo, jingle bells, jingle bells, catfish all the way. Now, I do use conditioner when uh, I wash it. I have to use conditioner then. Chris, stop. Please, please. I, I think your daughter is taking over the feed and asking me hair questions. That's what's going on. Your daughter is taking over. She, it's not even Chris Flores, folks. It's his daughter on here asking me hair product questions. So, hey, you know what, though? If it is his daughter, what we need to do is get our own hair uh, sponsorship deal and 
we can both have all the hair products that we need. So it could be a transcontinental partnership with a hair care products place. Let's talk about that later. That's a good idea. But anyway, I digress. Back to uh, how many rods, great question there from somebody, Glenn. Hey, cool, Glenn. Uh, how many rods can we have in the water here in North Carolina? I'm actually technically in North Carolina. Uh, I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second. We can have all of them in the water. <laughs> uh, I used to run some fishing tournaments here for our fishing club and people would ask, how many rods can we use? And I said, all of them. Uh, there is no rod limit, uh, all kidding aside. We do not have a rod limit. I know uh, uh, some parts of the country there are rod limits and we have no rod limit. You can fish all of them. So. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a good freedom to have. I know uh, I know my boy uh, Luke and the guys up at Northwoods Angling. They can only fish one rod per person, so it's a lot tougher fishing. Uh, would I like that? I wouldn't care. But it's a it's a level playing field for everybody. So I mean, yeah, if I was held to that, it would I think it would be great for the fishing and great for the fishery and it would really change tournament fishing because uh, I really believe some people have an advantage because they are able to catch a lot of bait and buy a lot of rods and be able to put more rods in water. So anyway, uh, but yeah, we're lucky we can fish all of them. Actually South Carolina too. What I was saying about technically, on um, the lake I'm fishing, the North Carolina, South Carolina line divides a good part of the lake so and most of it is up the river channel until you get to the north end and then it gets kind of funky up there and that's where you get a ticket at because people think it's somewhere else but technically right now I'm in North Carolina so uh, and it's the same in South Carolina I think South Carolina may have a law for bank fishing fishing on the bank you can only have two per person I think that's the way it goes but uh, yeah that's kind of what it is so I've got six out that's a good comfortable number. I can, I've drifted with 10. I've put out planer boards and everything and I've run 10. I'm gonna turn my lights on. And uh, it's, uh, you know it, if you got the bait, it helps if you have people cause it's kind of a pain in the butt to bring stuff in with that many, that many lines out. So four now in South Carolina, Bob said, okay, cool. I, I knew there was some, I thought something had changed when they changed that crappy law a couple of years ago or something. So, uh, which is fine, but, uh, there it's good there but uh yeah that's what's going on hope that brought everybody up today a lot of people coming in tonight uh three in michigan very cool very cool i i kind of wish we had that rule a little bit i mean uh, i think it may be good for the resource uh i don't know i've never really thought about it too much because we've been kind of spoiled with being able to uh, uh do that so uh damon said i just got some hookers terminal tackle and man, they are sharp. Yes, they are sharp. They uh, actually sent me some hooks to try out. And uh, the hooks that I got from them, I really haven't demoed them yet. I'm going to and do some more stuff with them. Uh, they, uh, it's almost like a kale, but it's a big kale with a heavy wire. And it looks like it's really good for trolling live baits. So I'm looking forward to trying those suckers out and giving them a little more of a try. Uh, there's some really heavy hooks, so. Uh, very cool. Let's see what we got here. Do you have your own blow dryer? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I love it, Chris. As much as I give you heck about rattlesnakes out there and fishing in ditches, uh, it's all right, man. I'm a tough one. Oh, guess what? Rod's going off. Let's see what we got over there. Ah. Love this. Reeling backwards, baby. I can adjust the camera. If you're wondering why I don't go crazy getting to the rod, I'm fishing circle hooks, and generally, by the time I know the rod's going off, hook's in their mouth or it's not. It could be a shark. There was a shark NATO uh, here earlier uh, in the week, and they think some sharks may have gotten into the lake, so it's possible it could be one, but we haven't seen any yet. Ah, uh, so we got there. Got a small one. Yeehaw! Shark or short? <laughs> that popped off. Got into the, I felt it getting the other line and it popped off. Oh. Bam, almost got the boat. Dang it, I missed it. Almost put it in the ski boat. Oh, fish on the other side.
come within casting distance of me, you might get to see what I'm fishing with. All right, let's see what this other one's got on it. Yeah, that one, uh, as it got close to the boat, I felt it getting the other line. And nothing will help you lose a fish like getting another line up near it because it just puts enough relaxation on that line and they pop off. So he was right there at the boat. I seen it. Little channel cat. We didn't lose nothing. This feels like another channel cat. Oh, did he pop off? No, he's still there. Sometimes I overhorse these fish, especially when they're small. When I realize they're small, I just go to winching on them. I usually jerk the hooks out of their mouth a lot of times. So. And no, by the way, Chris, uh, or your daughter who's ever hacked in there, uh, I actually don't dry my hair, believe it or not. I just towel dry it and rake it back with a comb and put a rubber band around it and I'm good to go. Why are we talking about my hair again? I've got a fish right here, and we're talking about my hair. Let me get him. Nice little blue, nice little blue. Probably should bug or grip this fish. There you go. You will break stuff when you do that. And that's what I did. Uh, let me get this. Hang on, folks. I'm still here. Snap. I cut my line. Here we go. Bam. Nice blue. Good one. Good one. A release. Yeah, I got that line leader got around this fin and cut it. Boom. We're catching them, pal. We're catching them. All right, let me get this fixed. By the way, rattle. That is nine fish, five on rattles. So. All right, show you something new I got. New toys. I got on here and was complaining, <laughs> which I'm really good at. Uh, it's not complaining, it's actual field testing is what I do. Anyway, the rig wrap boxes I had were too small. I needed bigger ones. Well, apparently the rig wrap gods heard me and a box showed up. I've got big rig wraps. I got big boxes. This is the coolest one. I can put three rigs in it, already tied. It's really cool. I'll show y'all more about it. But the coolest thing, they sent me some of these ceramic cutters. They're designed for braid, is what they're made for. Where'd that hook go? There it is. They're designed for braid. And they, they just cut everything really good. Uh, but I tried it on some like some thin braid because I've always had issues with cutting thin braid. It's just it's hard to cut and it gets twisted up in the scissors or whatever. Let me check. Let's change my boat speed. So uh, these little bad puppies. They got them on their website, rigwrap.com. But cutting little stuff like that, they're really cool and they great with the braid. I'll put a link on there. You can check them out and get you some if you want them. Very cool. They're ceramic cutters, so they're uh, they're really neat. Uh, where am I? I'm on the flat. Let me put this back in the water. Stay with me. Good crowd tonight. By the way, thanks everybody for joining in. I really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your evening. And uh, somebody go get me a Panther score real quick. interesting I would not be a bit surprised if the bike does not slam shut after dark just a uh, little thinking thinking let's see what happens let me get this line cast out I'll get back with you
I, yeah, here's what happens when you forget to uh, knock your railing gear. Yeah. So, anyway, that means I get to sit here and reel on this thing to get some of the line back on. Because I'm sitting here jacking my jaws talking to you guys. That's okay. It's a small price to pay. Get some line back on that reel. That's half a spool gone, man. That's crazy. Anyway, where was I? New people that join in, thank you for joining in. Thank you for watching the show. I really appreciate it. That's me doing that on that rod, by the way. Um, dragging on Lake Wiley. 85 degree water. Somebody asked about the plankton, and guess what? It's starting to bloom right now. Um, it was barely visible when I got out here. I found some places in the river channel where I saw it, and I'm going to show you what's happening. It'll probably fill up the entire sonar screen by the time we're by the time it gets dark. Get this boat slowed down. I picked up the speed. That might be why I'm not catching fish. Whenever I uh, got hung a minute ago, I, when it gets really stuck i just uh you pick up the speed and it'll pop it off so let me show you what this uh plankton bloom looks like that there knock that one in gear tour of the boat here all right here's what it looks like right there you can really start to see it in that part of the water column none of that was in here earlier when i rode through you can also see it on the side scan here in that part of the sonar cone but yeah it's starting to pop up off the bottom that is uh normally sitting right on the bottom and uh as it gets dark it starts raising up in the water column so that's what's going on there sorry plugging my charger back in and uh typically it's not a big deal at night uh, it does seem like the bite dies off though when that happens uh don't know why so uh, what i'm seeing now is a lot of stuff starting to stay above it i'll show you real quick here you see this, there's some bait schools and stuff that are starting to hang out above it now. I'm not seeing as much down on the bottom and I'm only in about 25 feet of water. So we'll see what happens with this. It, uh, it may mean that I have to uh, drag back into a creek or something because that's typically where I get hit better when that stuff starts to happen. So that, uh, as these water temperatures continue to fall, that will start to go away and disappear. So uh, it's just one of the one of the things the sum of that's a pain, there's a lot of bait. There was a good hatch this year. Uh, there was another fisherman stopped and talked to me earlier. And uh, we were talking about the amount of small little bee fry uh, today. And there's a lot of it here. Somebody just asked me, and by the way, uh, I know I missed a lot of questions. How many cat species are you targeting? I'll be honest with you, Southern fisherman. I'm not really targeting anything. This is what I call guide trip fishing. If I was out here on a guide trip, I would just be fishing for catfish. I'm not really targeting anything. I'm not really, uh, I'm just trying to catch fish. Uh, here, once it gets dark, what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna end up going across some humps that may have, uh, is where there's been some flatheads historically. And uh, it's where my son caught his personal best uh, a couple weeks ago, if you saw that feed. Uh, but I'm not really targeting anything. I'm not really working any kind of structure or anything like that that would hold flatheads or anything that would hold blues. So. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of dragging around. Like I said, a guide trip type fishing. If, if I was a fishing guide, I would be out here trying to put fish in a boat and, uh, you know, fish some stuff that should produce some big ones, but, you know, first and foremost, put fish in the boat. And it's been a good night so far. I mean, I, I cannot complain at all. So, uh, somebody just said, hey, was that Casey said, hey. Yeah, it was Casey. Hey, man, what's up? Great crowd tonight. Thanks for everybody joining in. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you got in and hadn't heard, Dieter Melhorn Fishing dot com is up that's my website uh i've got a blog on there there's it's kind of the hub it's the catfish hub of the planet well, at least in my mind uh it's <laughs> it's kind of the hub for everything that i've got now uh and there's links to instagram instagram facebook and uh, uh you see that finger right there I got crushed in a tripod. I was doing a shoot day before yesterday. It's horrible. Anyway, that one is YouTube. So I got links to all my stuff on there. And I've started a fishing blog. Uh, and I'll be selling some tackle and some gear and my t-shirts eventually once I can figure out the best avenue for that. So that's kind of the hub of everything. So, uh, so yeah, you can go there and just go off in different directions on what's going on. So the blog is kind of going to be a written rambling of all this crap that I say out here. It'll be much more concise and to the point, but try to do those a few times a week, uh, just on some 
topics, news of the day, what's going on fishing wise. It may not even have anything to do with fishing, to be honest. It may just kind of be about the lifestyle because that's really kind of what this whole thing is about. It's kind of my fishing lifestyle and that's why I got the channel. So uh, I know, uh, oh, we may have one going right there. I've seen a bump bump. I gotta get a sip of, I'm parched from talking so much. It's a little warm and muggy and nothing refreshes like an ice cold diet sun drop. I mean, after all, it's got part of my name in it, so it has to be good. One day, somebody from Sundrop is gonna see that, and I will be as big as Luke with Pure Leaf. Mm. You gotta turn the can so you can see it. Oh. Now if I'd get a fish right now, it would really be cool. Anyway. Uh, trying to think of what else I need to bring people up to date on. I think that's it. What is the limit on the different types of catfish there? All of them. <laughs> you, uh, we have no limits here. The only limit that we have on the North Carolina side is there's a one fish per person over 32 inches. So there's no krill limits here. Catfish are abundant. Uh, there's a lot of them and uh, they're, they're very hardy fish and right now we have no limits. So uh, I'm torn. I don't know if we need them. Honestly, our, our population is growing or is stable and doing good where it's at. So uh, I don't know that we need them. Uh, there goes a the rod. Uh, looks like a wee baby. Stay right here. Back to that in a second. Bam. And a planer's going too. We may have doubled here. Maybe doubled up. Yep, let's see. Planer's going off if you can see it out there. It's popping. Let's see what this one's got. Still small fish, but it's fish. It's good fishing. So. See what we got. Yeah, I think something's on the pointer. This one is. This is the one that had all the line out, and I should have reeled in more because it's a long way out. He's on top of the water, though. Feels like a channel cat. He's flipping and flopping. You absolutely have to get your fish in and you want it to keep or eat or something and they get on top of the water the best thing you do is let them go back down another small channel uh oh man guess what rattles have taken the lead that's fish number 10 fish number 10 came on a rattle that's six to four It's a little brim filet, a little six out gamagatsu, a little brim filet. Bam. All right, let's see what we got here. I think the one may still be on the planer board, we'll see. My goodness, what a crowd, 49 people. Thanks guys for joining in. I found out that the best time to do these things is in, in the evening because uh, people are sitting around you can throw this on while you're watching TV. Bam, number 10. We'll check this planer board. I think there's a fish on it. Yep, he's there. The great thing about circle hooks, generally, once they're in there, you're good to go. Uh, I think he's wrapped up in my planer board I just put out. Yeah, nice little blue. Nice eight pound fish. And no rattle on that one. There you go. 
nice one. Oh, oh, oh. It's pooping on my boat, pooping on my boat. Catfish poop. 51 people. Number, bam, 11. Goodbye, guys. Let me get this one back out. Figure out the mess. <clears throat> Again, the trick is take the planter board off before you put it out. Cast it out first. That's what I'm doing now. Tick, tick. Come on, planter. There we go. It's starting to get dark. I'm going to have to put my light up here in a second. Drift rig up, untangle. I've got all big cat fever rods out tonight. They're black. Let me say that again, they're black. They need to be white. Big cat fever, get a can of paint. Let's put out some white big cat fever rods for night fishermen. Come on, listen, here's the deal. If I can say the magic word that rig wrap needs some bigger containers for my rigs and they show up, I think I can say Big Cat Fever needs white catfish rods for night fishing. They should magically appear. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Once you say just saying, you can say whatever you want. That's the way it works. Those are international pop culture rules. Just saying. This is crazy. I'm always happy when I catch fish. These are the Dieter Melhorn Limited Edition. Dieter Melhorn Fishing Limited Edition. Custom planer boards. Guaranteed to have a chance to catch a fish. Yeah. You don't say that guarantee anywhere else. You're guaranteed to have a chance to catch a fish. Sure. Bear with me, getting them in the water. You know, hook them up. Those of you that run punter boards for the first time, you will put one out backwards eventually. Trust me. Trust me. Bear with me, got a little knot in the line. Almost like a little backlash thing going on, but it hadn't been cast. Imagine that, there we go. What you do with those planer boards, let make sure everything's engaged. Yeah, what you do is you put them out and they'll float out for a while. Just let some line go out, then knock them in gear. And when you do that, it'll pull it tight and start to go out. What I'm going to do while I sit here and jack my jaws and entertain you is I'm going to pull a light out because it's starting to get a little bit dark. It's starting to push the limits of the camera. And because I don't trust these yahoos, I'm putting on my PFD at night. Always a good idea to wear it. But especially at night. Lots of bad stuff happens at night. Let me get this light up. Bear with me. Good crowd, guys. Good crowd. Very flattered that everybody's hanging out. I'll show you real quick the light I use. It's actually one of the lights I use at work. It is a great big video light. It's got a battery on it. And turn that power up. Bam, it's bright. So what I will do is put that up here. Get just a little bit of light on me. Bam, there we go. There you go. At least you can see me a little bit better. I'm going to cut some of that off of me. But just enough to see me and see what's going on. So anyway, bring everybody up to speed. 
where are we on fish? Did I click on? Did I catch one and click it off? I don't know. I think we're at 11. Last time I remember saying it. Yeah, we're at 11. Dragging on Lake Wiley. Uh, six rods in the water. Uh, show us the boat. I'll do that. It's going to be hard to see it because it's dark. I need to do a boat tour when it's daylight, but I'll do it real quick. And then I'll tell you what's going on. All right, so yo, here's the boat. Up front, trolling motor. It's a Minn Kota. It's only a 12 volt, not a super big one. Nice big deck up here. This is a Carolina Skiff 198 DLV. Right there. Oh yeah, that's not a cooler, folks. That's a Yeti. Got me some sun drop in there. Now, I'll tell you a little trick. See that jug of frozen, that's a jug of frozen water. I put that in there and then I put some water in there. That serves two purposes. One, you can pre-chill your cooler, which I'll tell you about more about that later. You need to do that no matter what cooler you use, but especially high-end coolers. And uh, honestly, I've been doing that instead of putting ice in there. Put a gallon jug in there that I keep in a big freezer. It's frozen and I put some water in there. It freezes stuff up fine. Anyway, center console, as you can see there, I've got a flip-flop seat there that's custom made. A buddy gave me his old one and I added some stuff to it and it's pretty big on the inside. Can't see it real good now. I'll do this during the day. Then off the back, it's a nice big deck back here. There's storage in here, batteries over here, and then a live well here with all of daddy's little babies in there. So nice big Suzuki 90. That is about 10 years old, and I may retire it at the end of this year and get me a bigger one. I'll show you real quick what's happening. So we were talking about the plankton bloom earlier. Look at that. It's extending all the way up the water column now. Kabam. What we're going to do is down here make a run. We're going back down into the river ditch and back up onto some points here. We're going to try running back up into this creek and see if we can what it'll do with the fish. So, uh, yeah, that's a quick tour of the boat. Dragon bait, six rods in the water, we put 11 fish in the boat, and I hadn't been out here, I don't know, did I get out here at six, caught bait fishing at seven or something like that? Y'all could tell on the Facebook when I started it, so it's been a uh, been a good bite. It's been a good bite. Things are getting stable. We're into the summer, I think we are anyway, we're into a little bit of stability now uh, with some temperatures. Uh, water temps are down just a little bit, and I think the bite's going to be about like this probably into the fall. This is when, you know, it'll start to get better once temperatures start getting into the upper 70s. You start catching a lot more tuner fish consistently. So, uh, hey, good evening. What's up, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I know the, uh, let's see, when is it? Yeah, it's still over a month away. It's probably six weeks, seven weeks away. Uh, the Cabela's King Cat event will be down on Lake Waterbury in South Carolina. I'm actually planning to do, I think I got to work that weekend, so I'm not going to be fishing. They're going to be there. But uh, they should, uh, I'm going to try to do some stuff leading up to that. A little bit of uh, info, show some people around, possibly some people that aren't from the area that are going to be fishing. Just kind of what's going on in the lake, where you can put some fish in the boat. Uh, no guarantee to win it. It's, um, but I think, you know, if it's the traditional bike down there, it's going to take about a 20 pound average to win it. Uh, that's in 10 fish, two days. So, uh, so if, yeah, if you're in that 200, 210 pound range, you're going to get a check. So I don't see any reason that'll change this year uh, unless something super weird happens and there's a super cool down. Usually we start to get rain that time of the year. I know the last year they had it, I think it was when we had the big floods here. So, uh, uh, so yeah, it's a, uh, We'll see what happens with it, but I'm going to do some stuff leading up to that. So that's the plan. So I just said Country Girl caught a big fish. Did I miss all that and all the yak in here? Uh, I was going over so much stuff. I hope she did. I hope she finally met, got her new personal best. That would be awesome. Uh, I think she was around eight pounds for a while, and uh, I know she was hanging in there trying to, you know, I told her she'll get it. She'll get one. Uh, she fished in an area that doesn't have super big blues, so uh, that's one thing for people to keep in mind wherever you fish at. Uh, it can be kind of demoralizing going on the internet and you know if you're friends with a bunch of catfish people everybody's holding up big monster fish and well depending on where you fish you may not ever be able to catch a fish that big uh they're not everywhere uh you know they're not in every lake so um you know you kind of have to go by what's in your lake so if your biggest fish is 15 16 pounds and you're catching 12 15 16 pound fish you're at the top of the food chain so don't get discouraged by that keep fishing keep digging Keep learning, keep going at it, and yeah, it's a, uh, you'll, you know, 
strive to get the best in whatever water you're fishing in. Update, Panthers 14, Texan 7, very cool. Just curious, what do you do? Thank you for that. What do you do a little and see you online, you video production? Yes, that's what I do, uh, actually. Some people have asked, and it, it, it's scary that as bad as the videos are that I put online, I actually do it for a living. Uh, I actually have a, you can actually see some stuff we've shot, DieterMelhorn.com. Uh, that is actually the production company website, and there's some links on there to the video stuff. We do a lot of stuff that's NASCAR related because I'm in Charlotte, and uh, so a lot of stuff is around the NASCAR industry, but we also do car commercials. We shot a car commercial yesterday for Porsche, and uh, you know, the day we did some NASCAR stuff up at Richard Petty Motorsports, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I had the picture of the big 43 on there, so uh, let me turn this power down on this here a little bit. So yeah, we do all kinds of stuff. I was... Uh, uh, it's a busy week in Charlotte in my industry because uh, the uh, I wish there were 12 of me uh, yesterday and today because we've got the uh, PGA championship here and also there's a Panthers game tonight and I could have been doing both of those but had all this other stuff going on so yeah blessed to live where I live it's 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 a good market for what I do and uh, you know I love what I do uh, it uh, it, 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 it's tough when I have to get on a grind and not get to fish, but yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. So, but yeah, that's what I do. Uh, yeah, check out DieterMillhorn.com, and that shows you kind of the other side of what I do. So uh, it's, uh, it's a nice job in the sense it, it's, it's a double-edged sword. The work that I do comes in spurts. I may go on a tear and work five, six, seven days straight, you know, 15, 16-hour days, and then be off for a week. So it's almost like a... It's almost like a fireman with a bad schedule. Uh, it does provide some opportunities, but having a business for yourself, you kind of have to work when the work happens. So I'm not in a position to where, you know, I can just up and not work and get somebody else to do it. So, but yeah, it's cool. It's a uh, cool way to make a living. It's like anything else, you got to work at it. It's just like with this YouTube thing. I, I love doing this uh, and, you know, trying to get it to grow and get bigger and reach more people. And it's work. You got to grind it out and get stuff going and get stuff happening. That's why I'm trying to reach people in as many different directions. There's uh, Every time I get on a plane and fly somewhere and I fly across this country and I look down, I go, holy crap. Uh, I've got, you know, 11, 1,200 subscribers and there's, you know, 300 million people in this country. So there's a lot of people to reach. But Yeah, I heard a stat, 8 million catfish anglers in the country. That's a lot. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's pretty good. Uh, don't tell us the score. Recording. Oh, okay. Somebody done one. I got people telling me to score, Danny, because I I'm out here fishing. So, oh God, it's it's gonna be tough. Don't look at the don't look at the feed. Don't look at the feed. Let's make it out say that's cool. Maybe do it live. I love your videos. You can tell you are comfortable in front of a camera. Well, uh, let me be w one uh, wasting time clear about something. What I do is behind the camera. I run the camera. This is uh, uh, doing this side of the camera is different but yeah i can just jack my I, this is something that i love i love to fish uh this is my lifestyle and i'm very comfortable talking about it i'm you know not the best fisherman as you can tell by any means but i love what i do and i love talking about it i love educating people so that makes it easy uh, i'm curious i don't know how well i will do in front of a crowd of people but that is something that i am planning to do uh uh, this winter and fall is to try to do some seminars at Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's and some places like that just to kind of to try to spread the word and also uh, move past my fear of public speaking and speaking in front of groups. So I think I'll be okay if I just get here and jack my jaws and go talking because people, from what I hear, actually enjoy what I'm talking about. And I can tell from the 50, that's kind of the thing initially is you're kind of self-conscious when you do this. And I tell that to all the new people that are trying to do it. You know, they, they say it's tough in front of the camera because you're so self-conscious about, you know, trying to do it perfect and all that. And I found that trying to do it perfect is a waste of time. And um, it comes across way too fake and too planned and too forced. And so I just get out here and jack my jaws and be myself. So there we go. Uh, remember, I predicted the bite was going to die when it got dark. I got a feeling that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna see here. That means I just have to talk to you more. I can actually read some questions then too. Very proud of you. Well, that's cool. I appreciate that. It's uh, it's very interesting. Uh, country girl, uh, I see you're here now. How big was your fish? Somebody said that you caught a new personal bass. Chime in and let me know. Uh, country girl is one of the original fans of the Dieter Melhorn Lunacy. 
And uh, so uh, we're all rooting for her and want her to catch her big foot. Thir what? A 30 pounder? Oh my God, you gotta have some, oh, did you get video? You got some pictures of it? Oh God, I hope you got some pictures. I might have to go look at your Facebook. Hopefully you got some pictures. That's a big fish. That is a big fish. That's a heck of a leap from going from eight pounds to 30. That's a big jump, so that is cool. That is cool, congratulations. Why do you think the bite will die off after sunset? It's a very good question, I don't know. I, here's what I think happens, okay? I'm, um, I say that and the rod's going off. <laughs> uh, See, up. I believe what happens with this plankton blooming, I got a feeling these fish move from where they're at on the bottom. And I don't know that it's dying off as much as what I'm doing is no longer working. That's probably the best way to describe it. That's a beautiful picture, by the way. That really is a beautiful picture. A little sun setting in the background. Hang on, I'll get back to this. Oh, oh pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's so much that the fish quit biting. I think they're biting in a different place, and they're not biting where I'm at. So I think that's what happens. I think uh, maybe if I change stuff up, went and anchored on the bank and put fit, uh, lines up and down the bank, that probably, you know, would change. I catch some fish there. So, How long are we fishing tonight, Dieter? That's a good question, man. I don't know. Panthers are winning. Good. Sorry, I had to say that. Dirty Oris, how long am I fishing? I don't know. I'm going to try it for a little while longer. Um, what time is it? It's only 15 till nine. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I wanna make this turn up into this creek and uh, see if there's stuff up in there. I'm gonna try that. So I'll probably be on for a little while longer. Uh, have you tried suspending with your boards? Yes, let's talk about suspending and let's talk about how it doesn't work for Dieter Milhorn fishing. I tried that religiously for the past two weeks. And especially when the temperatures were up, the thermocline was in place, it is the best time to suspend fish. I tried it, suspended lines off the planer boards, bobbers attached to the planer boards, bobbers out the back, and down lines at the boat. And the catches were minimal. So now the bite was slow overall so was it a fair trial i don't know but that seemed like the time uh the time to be doing it so uh, i'm just it, well listen it works i know zach royce fishes that way a bunch and he, you know he's talked to me and told me i need to be doing more of it and probably if i give it some more time i would but you know uh i haven't so i'm not a super big fan of it as much as i hate to say it all i need to do is catch one 60 pound fish doing it all of a sudden i want to be the biggest fan of suspended fishing in the world so yeah we'll see now they text me uh, i just worked a 12 hours fish i need a hour of washing some fishing <laughs> some relaxing fishing i may be on that live uh, we're just gonna play it by ear here it depends how much i've got to talk about uh it's uh i'm watching the feed over here I got a question for you guys. Some of y'all, there's 46 people on here. There'll be some more. I got a question. There's some tournament fishermen in here, okay? How much would you pay to enter a tournament if there was a big, big payout? I'm curious what the, let's say you had a chance to win $10,000 cash, not a boat, not a, a boat and a bunch of prize crap. What's the most you would pay to enter a tournament to win $10,000? You'll think on that for a minute. I'm gonna get some answers. How much would you pay in a tournament? 500 at the Blacks in October. Blacks has one coming up. That's very cool. For 10,500 bucks. Two fi I'm getting 250 to 500. That's 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 interesting. All right. Let's raise the bar. Twenty thousand dollars. How much would you pay to enter a tournament to win a twenty thousand dollar first prize? And obviously, probably a pretty good payout on down. Curious. I'm just curious where the numbers are. I'm curious where everybody is at in the world with buying the fish. With, uh, you know, most tournaments now are, your local tournaments are, I don't know, 100, 120 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever. Your bigger ones, your national ones are in that 200, 250 range. But it's not a really big cash payout. 250, so... It seemed like the, we got people in that 250 to $500. I've been curious. I've been curious where the temperament is at of the fishermen right now. 500. So there's people in the 500 range. Okay, that's cool. 
That's good to know. I'm just curious. I, I've uh, I've been curious as to where it's at and where it stands and where everybody's temperament is and just how many serious players there are. I know there's been uh, some tournaments here that raised the entry fee a little bit and the turnout went way down, but it was a monthly series. And, uh, you know, a monthly series, you're going to fish it every month. It's a lot different than entering one big tournament for 500 bucks a year, you know, so... Uh, unless you're just a big baller, so I'm curious. Uh, the cat, uh, yeah, I think there is a fish. I think I got a small fish. Let me see what I can do here, guys. Crank some light up over here. I think he's there. Yeah, it's up on top. Typical blue bite on a boat, if you're new to this. You hook one, don't realize he's on there, drag him for a little ways, they'll come to the top of the water for some reason. And that's what this one's done. I'm almost willing to bet it's a blue. I'm gonna need my headlamp. Guess what I forgot tonight, guys? Thermosel. Bear with me, I'm gonna get a headlamp out of here. Yes, he he's in some lines. Ah, easy. Got into another line there. <laughs> Trying to pop this hook. Cutting the line. There he is. Nice little fish. Take him. Boom. Let me get this line untangled and back in the water. Guess what? Rattle. Rattle. All right, let me get this one out. Actually, I got to cut a piece of bait up here, guys. Thanks for your patience. I'm still here. I have to reconnoiter some lines. I may have one on a planer board. Bear with me here. First and foremost, clicker. Let's see if I got one on this planer. Yep, he's there. Got him. Get that light out of your face. He's there, still there. Bam! Y'all are getting to see some decent fishing tonight. Get this one in the boat here, bear with me. I'm 
another eater size fish. Another one that'll feed a family. Good fish. Nice blue. Yep. yep. No planer. No planer on that one. Oh, I'm sorry. No bobber on that one. Was on a planer board, no bobber on it. Let me uh, get these rods back out here, guys. Nice fishing. All right, this is where you can go get you something to drink, go pee, and. All right, do the popcorn. Go ahead and do the popcorn. You got time. I'm going to get these spades back in the water. You got time. Popcorn, pee, and a drink. Getting baits in the water. Slap the girls and make them holler. Bam. Like a boss. Planer on that one. All right, guys, about a minute. Got about a minute and a half, and I'll be back. So make sure you get get a cold drink. If you get a beer, pour two of them into a big Yeti. Okay, be right back. Gotta check one more line that got tangled. Bear with me. Good time to check bait too, actually. Been pulling for a while here. What a phenomenal bite tonight. This is crazy. It's a great bite, great fishing. Let's see what we got here on bait. Make sure we still got some meat on the hook. I think I left that one out a long ways too. Let me get back to try to read some of your questions. Should have brought my glasses. I can't read it at night. I have my glasses on at night. Gosh, I spilled too much line out on this one. All right, can you smell the popcorn yet? Should be in the microwave. Should be about done. That's why it's good to check on. That one back in. All right, got one more to check. This is the one that was tangled up on the one fish that we brought in. And then I got one fish to click off and we're about to make the turn up into the, go around the point here where my son caught his big fish. Bam. That is why I don't drift with braid. If that would have been braid, I would have had to cut that. Braid can be a nightmare to drift with, especially when it gets tangled. That's the biggest thing. Boom, bait's going on that one too. Glad I checked.
All right, for shizzle, I'm back. <laughs> That's crazy. What fishing? My wife asked me the other day. She said, you're on there live for a long time some nights. And this light adjusted. She said, you're on there live for a long time. What happens when you have to go pee? I haven't encountered that yet. Clicker. 13 fish. Amazing. 13 fish. Yeah, I hadn't had to do a pee breaker yet on the live feed. Let's see what we got here. Do you apply live, live or cut bait? Cut bait. 100% cut bait. Uh, I'll fish live sometimes, but here's the deal. Uh, and it probably 99% of what these big catfish eat is alive. I mean, you know, everybody says, oh, they're bottom feeders, bottom feeders. They don't necessarily eat off the bottom. They're on the bottom and feed upwards like a lot of fish. Uh, live, our cut bait has more scent. It puts more scent through the water column. So... That's why I like it and that's why I prefer it. I will fish live bait, have nothing against it. Uh, it just depends where I'm fishing. Typically, typically I don't catch as many fish on live bait. So uh, maybe because I'm a reservoir fisherman, that may have something to do with it. Uh, I know with the uh, flatheads especially, most of the flatheads I catch are, and all my personal best flatheads have all come on cut bait. So, nothing wrong with live bait though. I'm not, it's just here, that's what seems to work better. That was not enough time for popcorn. Uh, it's three minutes, isn't it? I think we had three minutes, didn't we? Well, bait. Do fish mid depths? Do fish mid depths? Well, dragon bait. If you're asking, do I fish the middle depths with dragon bait? Sometimes, but I don't have a lot of luck with it. I just, I have not had a lot of luck with it, but you can catch fish there. How does the planter board work? Let me tell you all this, because a lot of people don't understand this, and, uh, I take it for granted people know what they are, but they don't. I mean, it's not a real common thing. What it is is a, and I'm gonna do a little more in-depth video with this, I think in my swimming pool. Uh, they're basically a piece of thin metal. And what happens is you tie, you're basically got lines tied to two ends of it. And what is happening is, as the boat is moving, you're pulling against it. And what that's doing is the water is catching it. And when the water catches it, you know what's going to happen. It's like when you put your hand out the window going down the road in a car. You turn your hand like this, nothing happens. But when you turn it a little bit of an angle, it goes out away from you. And that's what's happening in the water. These things swim out away from the boat. You put them in right at the boat, you give them some line, and they'll just float. They'll float back to begin with. And then when you tighten the line up, it pulls the nose out, and they swim out. And they hit kind of a sweet spot, depending on how much line you put out and how fast you're going as to how far they go out. And what you can do is you can put the first set out, you know, swim them out away from the boat to here, put another set, swim them out to here. And basically what it does is, instead of fishing the width of your boat when you're trolling or drifting, you're able to fish 60, 70, 80 feet, depending on how wide it is. So that's, that's how they work. And they're only going to work when there's either A, the boat's moving, and it, the, the movement is what pulls them out away from the boat, or you can fish them in current if you were anchored up I think we got something, I don't know, I think it was hanging. Uh, you can fish them in current. When you're anchored, you can put them out. They go out behind the boat. You let them out, out, out. And as soon as you engage the reel, boom, they'll tighten up and they'll swim out away from the boat. So that's another way to do them. There's a lot of people uh, don't know that, but yeah, you can fish them that way. So yeah, good question. Let's see if there's any other stuff in here. Uh, uh, any of the monster turn? Do I plan on fishing any of the monster tournaments this year? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to fish them. There's the uh, one in Memphis that I'm thinking about. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go out and fish with Lyle from Catfish Weekly. Which, if you guys haven't subscribed, do so uh, while you're on YouTube. Catfish Weekly. It's a show that comes on every Monday night. Uh, it's a live show. Uh, do a lot of tournament talk on there, but they also have guests on there. Be sure to subscribe to that. Definitely, it's a growing show. It's going to get bigger, and there's people like myself and Luke up at Northwoods Angling and Chris Flores that are going to make the show get bigger because I think it's great for the industry and great for the catfish world, and they're great guys. But anyway, I'm going to try to go out with Luke and uh, uh, Lyle and fish with them uh, out there pre-fishing. Um, from what I've been told about fishing the Mississippi and those big rivers, I don't fish that stuff, and uh, that's a whole different world of fishing. It's a different style of fishing that I'm just not, I am just totally ignorant of. But I want to go fish with him and learn how to do the bottom bouncing. And I'm thinking about flying out there and fishing with him for a couple of days pre-fishing. He's already booked up for the tournament. 
and uh, what I'm thinking about doing is going out doing some live stuff on the boat with him and then maybe doing some live YouTube stuff from the actual tournament weigh-in and kind of show everybody what's going on so uh, I think that would be fun uh, Memphis is a crazy town the one thing that really draws me to Memphis is the barbecue so if I wasn't doing a fishing channel I would probably be doing a barbecue channel and I've actually thought about piggybacking it somehow and doing it but that's a whole different story uh, but yeah that's uh check make sure I engage all these things after sending them out but yeah that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing um all of the like the uh, uh, the one in Ohio stuff it's all river fishing and I'm just you know I might be willing to come out there and jump on a boat with somebody if they need a partner but me going out and doing it uh until I learn how to fish that kind of stuff it's really I'm kind of wasting my time uh, I, I mean I'm just it's a waste of time and money for me to do it but I'd love to learn how to do that because fishing that constant current and that swift current you guys that fish that stuff uh, we get intermittent current out here. We get current during, you know, water releases at a dam, and uh, it's almost like a tidal bite. It sparks a bite, boom, it's on. But you guys that fish that constant stuff, it's a, it's a totally different way of fishing. And uh, we just we just don't do it here. Uh, and, you know, it's it kind of is what it is. You know, when they have tournaments out here and guys come out here and fish them like the Cabela's and stuff, and they go to water arena, it's like, there's no current, nothing's moving, you know. It's a totally different world, so... Uh, but I'm hoping to do that. I think it would be fun. Um, I think it would be fun to go live from out there and uh, do some stuff, just to do some live stuff from some different waters. Um, and I think it would be a hoot to be on a boat with Lyle and Doc and just kind of have a good time. So, but yeah, we'll see. Of course, where are you in your Facebook page, Richard Petty? Were you in Greensboro? No, Country Girl, uh, Richard Petty uh, is, uh, the actual uh, Richard Petty Motorsports is in Mooresville now. Uh, his uh, old shop, where he's from and stuff, is up in Level Cross, which is near Greensboro. I've been up there plenty of times. Uh, cool place. It's uh, the old shop and museum up there. It's really cool. I mean, it's really historic. And uh, I still remember when they were operating out of that place. So a uh, uh, lot of cool stories from up there. Uh, None of which I can tell on here, but uh, yeah, but yeah, he's uh, in Morrisville Niles. Richard Petty Motorsports is in the old Robert Yates shop uh, where they used to be when they uh, had a team. So I think a couple of people have been in it since. And let me see what my speed's doing. Okay, good. But uh, yeah, we did a uh, a behind the scenes with uh, Eric Amarola's uh, crew chief. Uh, I think I got a fish. I got a fish. Bear with me here. Let's see what we got here. There, we got me, yes, sir. The only thing about fishing at night is seeing these lines. Oh, and remind me about the slime line. Somebody asked me about that. Feels like a blue, but it feels like a small one. Easy. It's a perfect eater fish. If I was keeping fish to eat, this would be a perfect one. About seven pounds. You feed the family on that one right there, babe. It's a good one. But we're releasing them. Let me tell you about my release. I've had people ask about it. You wouldn't believe how many messages I've had about it. Let me get this bait back out. Hang on. As you know, I torpedo my fish into the water. Where we got 
the Sorry, so much silence. Dead air, dead air, dead air, dead air. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Let's send one. What does that number say? Bam! 14 fish. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Uh, anyway, I forget where I was at. Dang, 60, oh, 60 people was up for a second. I went to 59. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate y'all chiming in and coming over here hopefully you subscribe if you like the channel and like the lunacy that goes on here uh please hit subscribe that's awesome hit the thumbs up that's good facebook or youtube loves when you hit thumbs up for some reason it makes me look like a hero but anyway uh yeah subscribe if you haven't and then make sure you visit DieterMillhornFishing.com. that's kind of the hub of everything you got to get on facebook i'm almost to a thousand i've been harping on this thousand tried to do it in the first six months and i didn't do it and I think I'm only like 50 people away. So go wake up your neighbors. Go knock on the door. Go, hello. And, oh, crap. I just shouldn't have done that. Just threw everything up the screen. Uh, <laughs> tell them to hit like on Dieter Melhorn Fishing on Facebook. That way I can get to 1,000. There's some promotional stuff I can do. That's the only reason. You won't hear me harp about it after that. Uh, where was I? I went to Richard Petty to do a shoot today. Wasn't with Richard, it was with, with the crew chief, Eric Amarola, and slime line. No, I do not fish slime line. Um, I did a test with it, which you can see on my website. Uh, somebody gave me some 20 pound and I tested it. And uh, I want to get some more and do some more tests. Uh, it's got a lot of stretch to it. If I was like sponsored by them and had a supply of line to fish with, it would be different because I think you need to re-spool that line a uh, pretty good bit. It's got stretch to it, and if you put it under a big load, my concern is is that it's going to stretch it out thin, and it's done to come back, and it's more likely to break. So it's kind of like with the guys that tarpon fish down in Florida. Uh, when they hook into a tarpon, even if they don't get it to the boat, they're in there re-spooling every night because they put such a load on the line and put so much... Uh, stretch into it and so much it'll stretch it thin that was the thing we saw in the test was i'd done a pre-test with it and i had a whole bunch of andy line and i was using it and it stretched too but it was you know it was i don't know 15 percent stretch and when i tested the uh slime line the problem was where we had had a bucket that we would fill with water and that way you could get an accurate weight as to how much it would hold um uh, it stretched, it was like 40% stretch. It's, I was using, I think, I'm gonna just, you can look at the video and see to get the exact numbers. But roughly it was an 18 inch piece of line that was stretching to like 24 inches or something. I, I forget what it was. Uh, but anyway, 24, 26 inches before it would break. We actually had to adjust how far the catch piece was below it. Uh, because with Andy, it would stretch down and get about that far from it and it would break. With the slime line, it stretched all the way to the thing. The first test, you'll see in the video, I did it live. So it was, my son was helping, so it was kind of chaotic. But um, it stretched all the way to the chair that was below it, and we had to redo it and retie it and everything because it stretched that far. The great thing about that is, is that it is forgiving. If you get a fish and you got a stiff rod, it will stretch and give before breaking. It broke very high. Uh, I will say that 20 pound line, I want to say broke at 27 pounds, something like that. So it's breaking way above its rated weight. So that's a good thing. Uh, and like I said in the video, I don't know that too many people are going to put 20 pounds of, most people don't have, you know, reels that'll put 20 pounds of drag on it. So, you know, there's something to be said there, but uh, it's it's breaking way above its, its rated weight. So that's a good thing. But yeah, I... Uh, I'm not one that's going to put black lights and all. I know it glows in the dark or something, but uh, I would rather have Big Cat Fever give me some white rods. Can, can, I, can you see these rods back here? Mm -hmm. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to point at them. Right there's a rod. See that rod right there? See where that white ugly stick is pointing? That's a uh, rod. There's a rod over here where this one's at. I'm giving them a hard time. They're gonna make a white rod, is what I'm saying. I'm gonna badger them until they come out with a white catfish rod. Um, I got a feeling it's gonna happen. 
I'm gonna give them a hard time. Hopefully they're watching this. So I don't get that adjusted there. But uh, but yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't fished those. right now. I have uh, I actually went up to 30 pound line. I fished with get that adjusted 20 pound line forever. Get a hold of Steve Douglas and go fish with him on the Ohio. He does it all boards. Yep, Steve's a good guy. I actually talked to him on the phone for about an hour today. Uh, really good guy. Uh, uh, yeah, good guy. I'm gonna enjoy seeing him here soon. Uh, yeah, I want to fish with him too. We're trying to get over to get together at uh, a place over in eastern Tennessee, but we'll see. We'll try to make it happen. But uh, but yeah, uh, right now I've got uh, upgraded from 20. I fished with 20 pound line forever. And uh, I went up to 30 uh, because of the planer boards. I just wanted something a little bit bigger, a little better bite on it. And I tried braid for a few days out here. If you watch any of my videos, I had some of my reels that had uh, braid on it. And uh, I put those on some rods. And I don't know. I just don't like braid. It's just so stiff. And uh, I love braid for... I think I got a fish. I love braid for like my lightweight rods, uh, perch rods, boom rods, all that kind of stuff. But it's just so stiff for catfish and I just, uh, I'm not a fan of it. But uh, I went to the 30 pound and that's I think what I'm gonna use from here on out. Either uh, Andy or uh, Mamoy makes a great line. That's another good one. And I'd be interested to, you know, at the whoever makes slime line, I'd like to get some of the 30 pound and try it out. Uh, you know, hey, slime line, whoever you are, if you're out there, send me 2,000 feet of it or 2,000 yards of it and I'll put it on some reels and see if it works. Uh, I'll put it through the paces. So let me see if there's a fish on this. Hold on, hold on. I think he is. By George, I think the little fella is on now. I think it's a fish. That or I may be tangled in another line. I don't feel a head shake. That fish may have given up. That fish may have given up. Yep, there's a fish. It's a fish and it was in another line. Wow. I think that fish gave up. Must be a French channel cat. There he is. Oh, was that mean? I'm sorry, France. Sorry. Channel. Let me get this line untangled. Bear with me, folks. Untangling the line. Oh, that should not be that hard. Let me cut a piece of bait. One more second. All right, I'm coming back. Man, what a night, what a night. What are we up to? Anybody keeping count? Anybody remember? 
Do the official fish clicker. 15, baby. 15, and I hadn't been out here that long. It's crazy. What's up, man? James is on here. What's up, pal? We're doing the uh, we're doing the official rattle count tonight. In case you guys don't know, there. Ow! Bug under me. There. there it is. The rattle. Jingle bells, catfish bells. The bugs are showing up. Whew, it's gonna be bad. Uh, Fifteen fish. Eight are on rattles. So uh, it was kind of lopsided there in the beginning. But uh, it's kind of evened out a little bit now. So, oh, look at the bugs. Somebody send me, go to my website and email me a message that says, Dieter, put the thermosel on the boat before you come back out at night. <laughs> this is bad. Yes, man, let's see who's in here. What was I rambling about? Use 20 pound mono um, up here. Your braid. And it'll give you some stretch. Uh, mono, Watts Bar. Somebody said Watts Bar. Just got on. Oh, yeah, let me give everybody an update real quick. Just so, because, God, there's so many people, man. Thanks for joining in, guys. I really, uh, it's really cool y'all come in here and watch me fish out here. This is really awesome. Uh, give you an update. I'm fishing on Lake Wiley, dragon bait, so I'm trolling. Uh, let's see how much I can get away with here with keeping. Oh, those bugs are some reason bad back in this creek. Uh, and that dang planer board has got a fish on it. Bad gummit. Let me get that. I just saw that go straight. Ah, now you can see the bugs probably really good. Notice that line was going in an odd direction. This may be a decent fish. A decenter fish. What we got there? Decent fish. Oh, the bugs are hideous. This fish should be in about four lines. It's went from that way, all the way over to this side. Could be a mess. Yeah, I already see one line. Oh, this is gonna be a mess. I see him up on top. The term angling comes from the old fishing days of where fishermen would angle a rod different ways to land the fish. That's what I'm doing right now to try to get this fish around some of these other lines. He's not a monster, but God, I got a mess now. Oh. There he is. That one back in the water. Oh, the bugs are bad, boys. The bugs are bad. Let me, uh, this is your bathroom break. <sighs> bugs, about knock my phone in the lake. Oh, they're bad now. Can you see this? Ah. <sighs> Let's see if we can see them. There we go. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me uh, see what I got with the lines. Quick minute for a bathroom break. I'm gonna get these lines untangled. Take your bathroom break, get your popcorn, get another cold drink.
Just so you know, guys, I am untangling lines and getting swarmed by bugs. So bear with me, bear with me. All right, there's two of the three untangled. Bam. Working on the last one. You got time to make a sandwich, quick sandwich though. Not a heated sandwich, just a quick sandwich. All right, that went better than I thought. Bam, bam. Oh, the bugs are nasty. They are nasty. Clicker, 16 fish. I'm gonna try to get as far over here as I can. I really gotta bring my light pole out. It would be a lot easier with these bugs. You can see them now. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. See what happens there. Anyway, where were we with the question? When you're using planar boards at night, do you use any type of light? Uh, actually, I don't generally use my planers at night for that simple reason. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to pull one in right here. Uh, matter of fact, while I sit here and talk to you, I'm gonna reel it in. For that reason, they've got a place on them for light sticks. Um, and there's a company I was laying in bed, did a live feed last night, that makes a little light stick. It's got a battery in it. If you guys are watching, message me i'd like to demo some of your products and put them on some rods to try some stuff out uh i forget their names and uh i was watching it and i forget the name of the light stick things but they look pretty cool uh, and these planer boards i just reeled one in sorry about that they've got a place on there for a light stick you can put a big one on there if you need to uh they uh i just you know it's I try to keep it simple. I really do. I like things nice and simple. You can whisker sticks. That's it. That's it. Whisker. I keep confusing it with something else with drifting sticks. But yeah, uh, I try to keep it simple. I'm just a simple man. I'm like a country song. Oh, we're out of bait. Put a bait on there. I ain't nothing but a simple man. They call me a redneck, I reckon that I am. These things that are going on that make me mad down to the core. Crooked politicians and crime in the street, madder than hell, and I ain't gonna take it no more. Well, Charlie Daniels, one of only a few people I've ever gotten an autograph from. Uh, I mean, what death am I at? I'll be honest with you, I forget who asked that. I couldn't see who asked that question. Is that fishing, Steve? Uh, I've covered a lot of depth here. I've covered everything in the part of the lake that I'm at. About the deepest is about 38 feet where I'm at uh, in the river channel, and uh, I fished from that all the way up. I've been 25 feet now. Come, I'm back into a creek mouth now. I was out on the main lake, the main channel. I've come up into a creek mouth. So I've covered pretty much every water depth from about 15 feet out to that 
38 feet. Oh, just inhaled a bug. Um, so the only thing I haven't done is like some super shallow bank fishing. And I'll be honest with you, it's the time of the year for it. This is a good time to, uh, you know, all the bank guys get on the bank and they chunk lines out as far as they can. But a good strategy in a boat is to get out on a point or somewhere and cast everything up to the bank because there's a lot of fish feeding up on the bank this time of year. It's actually a good time of the year for it. So, but dudes, I'm telling you guys, this has been a great night of fishing. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll show you real, let me turn that off. 16 fish. If you followed any of my live feeds earlier, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, it was five to nine fish a night or a day when I was fishing. So, uh, and fishing in some of these same areas. Uh, so it's, it's using any heads. Yeah, actually I am. Somebody's asking about the, I'm using fillets in heads. Usually what I do is take a brim, fillet off both sides, and uh, then use a head and both the sides. Hey, somebody just said, hey, I'm see there off the glare of the light. Hey, what's up? Glad all you guys joined in. Thanks a lot for coming in here and watching tonight. Nighttime seems to be the best time to do these feeds. I don't know what we're going to do when it gets cold because uh, the one good thing is we fish all year. I will be doing this all year uh, down here in the south. Uh, we, uh, I know some of my boys up north, uh, Mr. Luke, will not be able to fish because of this thing called ice. But uh, we'll fish all year. I'll be out here in the winter doing this. So, uh, that's the only bad thing is doing it at night. It gets kind of chilly, and I typically don't fish at night in the wintertime, but we'll try to make something. Touchdown, Panthers, Bob Clark says. Touchdown, sweet Caroline, ba, ba, ba. If y'all have ever been to a Panthers game, you'll have to, no, nah, so anyway. Ah, nothing like a nice, refreshing diet sun drop. Do you ever go to Lake Norman? Fishing Steve, thinking about going up there in the morning. I've got to head down. Uh, oh, some bad news for the family. I hate to bum everybody out. My wife, Tanya, who a bunch of y'all see chime in here every now and then, uh, her stepmom passed away, and uh, they're having the funeral on Friday. So we're, uh, I'm actually going to be leaving sometime tomorrow to go down there. Uh, I've had to work a few days. She's down there. But uh, thinking about going and fishing a little bit before I leave in the morning. I've got a bunch of stuff i got to get taken care of before I can leave. So... I may get up at Odark 30 and go for a little bit, but uh, 24 to 10 Panthers. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's some, uh, that's some sad news, but uh, unexpected too. That was the other bad thing. So, uh, But yeah, uh, I do go to Norman. I have not been up there this year. I got a feeling uh, the damn bite is over. Uh, the water temperatures as cold as they are. Dieter, what is a solid strategy for water reach stripers this time of year? Uh, no idea. I, and I'm being totally honest with you on that, Jake. I know you've seen some of my, probably my striper videos I've got up on the page. Um, uh, I've had two people, three people text me and call me and ask me what's going on with the stripers because they can't find them. They were doing pretty good. Um, pretty much summertime is a mid lake deal. It's one of those from, uh, Clearwater up to June Creek kind of deals. You just got to find them. And, uh, I've had like three different people message me wondering where the stripers are. So, uh, I thought I heard something. No, okay, sorry. Some water on my live well. Uh, right now, uh, here in the past couple of weeks, the thermocline's been in place, so that's really changed around where the stripers are and stuff, so I wouldn't know where to start. Uh, I wouldn't. New to the channel, somebody new. Welcome, pal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for uh, chiming in and joining in. Yeah, um, I wouldn't know where to start with stripers on Watery right now. I accept that that mid lake area is where they're going to be. They're going to be somewhere in there, and uh, they may be scattered or whatever. I know I'd probably even go further closer to the dam because I know like on Clark's Hill and places like that, that's where those guys are catching a lot of them. And down on Lake Murray, that's, you know, everybody's down at the towers fishing. So that's probably your, you know, best bet. I'd honestly put in down at Clearwater, lower into the lake and start at the dam and work back up. That's probably the safest bet uh, to try to find something. Let's see, is that hanging or a fish? I think that's hanging. Oh, that looks like it's hung good too. That may be a breaker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's got the whole boat pulled sideways. Let me deal with this. Stand by. Yep, hot moves. But yeah, all the new people, uh, appreciate you joining in. I'm curious how you found out about it. Um, if you are new and just found this on uh, by YouTube notifications, good thing, we got 46 people. If you found out about this channel by being notified on YouTube, 
throw up a thumbs up or some little thingy. Uh, I don't know, what do you do? Let's see. Yeah, something, just say I did or something like that. I'm curious who all found out and got notified about it because that's all new stuff for me on just how many people, how they find out about this feed. I mean, obviously I got people who subscribe and they're notified. Uh, Connie Queen, Connie Queen, very cool. How is she doing? Tell her I said, hey. Uh, yeah, I remember her from high school. Actually, I just stumbled across her Facebook page today. She was a friend for somebody else on there that I saw, so very cool. Very cool, all kinds of, it's kind of interesting where all the connections come from. I got some uh, football tickets today from a girl I went to high school with that I hardly ever see, and it was on Facebook, and she said, oh my God, I work with somebody that watches your fishing channel, so it's kind of crazy, so. Yeah, if y'all are ever out and see me anywhere, come say hey. I've had some people like uh, stare at me real weird and I wonder what's going on. Did I walk out in my underwear or something? But then they're like, aren't you? And yeah, come say hey. I talk to the people all the time at the boat dock and boat ramp and around and it's really cool. Uh, it's fun. It's uh, I'm really happy to share the information and you know, like I've said before, I think educated anglers are the key to protecting our resource because I think when people are able to catch fish consistently they're able to and feel good about releasing fish consistently uh, because they know they can catch them again so like the info you hand out see that's cool there's people that just stumble onto it and uh, yeah if you subscribe you'll be notified and make sure you just um, also subscribe on Facebook Dieter Melhorn Fishing or just Dieter Melhorn on Instagram because what I'm doing and what I'm trying to start doing is when I know I'm going to come out here and go live like I did tonight, I'm going to try to put up a video on, uh, uh, or put up a little blurb saying, hey, I'm going live in 30 minutes or whatever. So, Dieter, did you go to high school? I went to Ashbrook and Gadsden. I went to South Point. I was over in Belmont with the Rednecks, So, uh, which now South Point has become the little a little good school in Gaston County because of all the Belmont transplants. So, uh, yeah, it's not the town it used to be. Uh, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, <laughs> it's probably a good thing. So, but man, what a night. It has been phenomenal fishing. Uh, I have caught more fish tonight than a couple of trips put together. So, uh, East Gaston, oh, big rival for South Point. I'll still love you though. It's okay. That's all behind us now. You two are fighting no matter. Won't send me anything about anything going live. Now, James, have you went up and hit the little gear thingy or hit the bell? You hit the bell on YouTube. The little bell is turn on notifications. Make sure that's turned on and also make sure your phone's not blocking it somehow. Um, yeah, you're supposed to be able to hit that little bell and that's the notification thing. That, uh, that's weird, I, but I have heard and I have read that YouTube doesn't notify everybody even when your notifications are on and I can't figure out why that is. Uh, I don't know if that's a throttle up kind of thing. Because uh, I notice usually when I come on, it's like boom, there's 13, 14 people come up real quick and then it kind of climbs up, climbs up. So I don't know exactly what that deal is. But uh, again, if you subscribe to, or follow me, hit like and follow on Facebook on Dieter Melhorn Fishing, and also on Instagram, Dieter Melhorn. I'm going to try to start sending out those notifications and go, hey, I'm going to go live at 8 o'clock, live at 7 o'clock, that kind of thing. So that's uh, that's kind of my plan. One day, I'll probably have like an email list and email people and tell them what I'm doing it, and maybe even one day I have fantasies about having a halfway normal schedule and being able to go on certain days. But right now I do it when I can, and I apologize for that. I know a lot of channels... Um, do stuff to where you know they do it every Monday Sunday whatever and uh, with my schedule and the way I work it kind of varies so it's hard for me to do that so uh, so I just kind of do it when I can and when I can get out here and uh, good Lord willing I'll be able to you know get out once or twice a week and be able to do it and I still got the edited videos I've got a bunch of those on the shelf uh, that I try to keep for when I can't come on and do live because I'm trying to do the live stuff as much as possible and uh, trying to do, uh, you know, they use the other ones that are on the shelf, edited and stuff to kind of fill in when I can't get in when I'm working out of town, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the game plan on everything. But yeah, it's been a great night. I'm probably going to wrap it up here. It's, 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 I, I 
I'm gonna quit while I'm on top. Uh, it's it's how many fish are we up to? I mean, 16 fish, dude. That's 16. That's an amazing night. Amazing night of stuff. Uh, fish log for you. Start my fish log. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll get you one of those books. But yeah, it's an amazing night of fishing. I appreciate y'all joining in. Uh, I'm gonna try to do some more. Check out the blog, the blog thing on DieterMillhornFishing.com. Um, that's kind of gonna be hopefully some information to peruse back through. Uh, sometimes some stuff in written form. It's a little bit easier to take in and digest. There's gonna be some fishing tips. Time I'm gonna go over a little bit of that fishing calendar stuff that I've talked about on here when there are certain times of the year certain things happen and I'm gonna try to lay some of that stuff out in there in a little bit more in depth. And uh, just use that for some of the written information and. Again, it's just about all sharing this stuff and, you know, building a community of people that are into the same lifestyle or enjoy the same lifestyle or, you know, are interested in it. And, and I appreciate all y'all tuning in. And uh, what will happen is I will put this video up tonight. Uh, it'll go up right away, but I'll kind of do some stuff with the title. Come back in if you have any questions or comments. I missed a lot of questions and I apologize in here uh, uh, for doing that. But once it's back up, come in and put any questions you want to down there. I've got a dang good track record of answering everything. Now, one day when, you know, 100,000 people, it, you know, good Lord willing I ever get to that point, it'll be a lot harder. But right now, you can suck all the information you want to out of me. Uh, I try to answer every one of them and uh, at least come in and have a good laugh with you on some of the comments. So, uh, but for now, I'm going to sign off. Hit subscribe if you enjoy it. And... Uh, Y'all have a great night, and uh, we'll talk at you again here soon.